Okay, good afternoon. Probot is a project made of uh, social scientists. Um, we focus on eutrophication and we examine how social features, economic impacts, and institutional factors ultimately determine uh, the design of policies uh, to the Baltic Sea. And drawing on our work, I can assure you, the problems in combating eutrophication are not predominantly ecological, they are social. We condense our conclusions into uh, four suggestions or, or recommendations to macro level and national level policy makers. And I start with the first one. Some background. Um, as we have heard, we have Baltic Sea Action Plan, that is a recommendation and it should now guide littoral countries at a macro level. Unfortunately, the country-wise reduction targets allocate abatement cost very unevenly between the countries. Poland alone bears 78% of the costs. Poland, Russia, and the Baltic states together bear 96%. We think that the economic content of the Baltic Sea Action Plan is one of main obstacles in implementing it. And therefore, our first recommendation is to, to improve Baltic Sea Action Plan to make it truly binding, cost efficient, and fair between all countries. What would this mean? We think that a binding agreement is crucial for Helcom to be the primus motor in the Baltic Sea protection. In the absence of such agreement, Helcom has no strong footing to promote the uh, reduction in nutrient flows. If you forget Russia and look at what is happening now at the Baltic Sea, we find that most of nutrient reductions take place thanks to the EU sectoral policy, mainly due to implementation of uh, urban wastewater directive. Therefore, we also examined the role of EU, how great role it could have in the Baltic Sea protection. Unlike HELCOM, the uh, European Union can enforce its policies, but there are obvious drawbacks for EU. Its sectoral policies are simply too lax for the ecologically sensitive Baltic Sea. Moreover, there are at least three key countries that do not belong to, to the EU, Russia, Ukraine and Belarus. Thus, we think that the truly binding agreement would be the means to overcome both the enforcement problem associated with HELCOM and the problems of too lax uh, policies associated with uh, uh, European Union. Um, okay, the second. It should not be a surprise to you that uh, the Baltic Sea can be saved only by actions in the catchment areas. And the key sections, sectors have been mentioned here, agriculture, which is a non-point source polluter, and wastewater treatment plants, which is a, a point source. Our second suggestion is based on the differences between these two sectors. Thus, we say there is a need for spatial and temporal specification of, of nutrient policy. Spatial specification is needed for agriculture because nutrient loads differ greatly between field parcels, depending on their properties. Current area-based support payments for environmental actions do not uh, promote spatial targeting. Thus, we need new instruments for uh, agri-environmental policies. And one good candidate could be uh, tendering systems that are based on um, environmental benefit indexes, which take into account the heterogeneity of, of um, agricultural lands. Temporal specification is our suggestion to set intermediate goals for um, nutrient reduction, for instance, in the Baltic Sea Action Plan. What we have found is that just by investing in wastewater treatment plants, we can achieve 70% for phosphorus, 63% for uh, 
for nitrogen of the reduction targets that have been set in the Baltic Sea Action Plan. And this reduction can be achieved very quickly. This is actually exactly what NEFCO suggested a few years ago. This rapid reduction, considerable reduction, would give us time to work in agriculture. Because it is also a fact that reducing uh, phosphorus loads in agriculture takes much time. It takes several decades. So we need time to adjust agriculture in terms of phosphorus, and we could take quick benefits by investing in wastewater treatment plants. So short-term and long-term actions to, 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 to go forward. Our third um, suggestion and recommendation for policymakers is, is a more effective and thorough integration of different um, policy sectors. We find that in many cases, land-based acti land activities and sectoral policies impact the uh, state of the sea. Sometimes they tend to work against the environmental goals, while sometimes we could enforce them and get some additional benefits for the sea. Uh, we think this in requires increasing cooperation between administra administrative branches, for instance, between agriculture, energy, environment, and transportation sectors, also fisheries. I'll give you here just one brief example. Common agri agricultural policy is based on area payments, like single file payment currently. They have many ad advantages, but they have one important disadvantage. And that is area payments increase the amount of cultivated land in agriculture. So because farmers get more revenue, the, the more they have land. Conversion of land, forest land to agriculture increases loads by tenfold. So what we need for common agricultural policy is a ban to convert land to agriculture. To, make, to, to, to protect the Baltic Sea. Uh, our fourth suggestion is increasing publicity, environmental awareness, and deliberative democracy. We would stress two things. Uh, Michael Gillett al already told about how important stakeholder uh, participation is. This is exactly our uh, conclusion also. So I just would like to add one aspect. What we would like to see in the eastern coast of the Baltic uh, Sea, a growing environmental movement, a movement that could um, channel people's willingness to, to work for the Baltic Sea and to provide pressure for national uh, governments to, to strengthen their policies. This is exactly what happened in Finland and Sweden in the 70s, and we know that it had very good uh, sort of outcome. And we think that in the long run, this fourth recommendation and conclusion is, is the most important one to, to save the sea. Thank you.